Hi, I'd like to talk with you about what I consider a richer conceptualization of irony than you'll probably find on your typical website defining it. I want to talk about irony as an emphasis on discrepancy and as a tool of social commentary. And specifically, I want to get you thinking about how that plays out in Huckleberry Finn. So I want to sort of argue that, not sort of, I want to argue that the heart of irony is discrepancy, a discrepancy between X and Y. The classic is the discrepancy between what is said and what is meant, right? An ironic comment or ironic language. Uh, but we can also think of more situational or dramatic context for irony, a discrepancy between what's expected and what happens. And that expectation can be a social expectation versus how the characters are acting and what's actually happening in the story. Um, it can be a discrepancy. Irony can be a discrepancy between a, what a character knows and what we know. That's often called dramatic irony when you encounter it in a play or a film or an artistic performance. But in our text, uh, there's a lot of fun that can be had with that in terms of Huck and, and our knowledge of what uh, he knows and what we know, and also the historical gap between when the period the story is describing and the period in which Twain is writing it. That creates interesting discrepancies, ironic discrepancies that we can explore. And then just another way to think about irony is what's understood and what is meant. And that, that plays out a lot with a range of characters in Huckleberry Finn. So those are just some variations on the idea of discrepancy that open up for us, I think, a broader and more powerful sense of irony, especially in Huck Finn, but also in, in really everything we're going to read this semester. So let's take a quick look at three obvious ironies in Huck Finn, given that discrepancies definition that I gave. And let's think about how each one of these ironies allows Twain to comment on a cultural tension uh, and, and to engage in cultural criticism. So the first one's Judith Loftus, right? And she's supposed to be uh, a, a woman who is... Uh, a domestic goddess of the house, right? Mother, wife, sister. Her her focuses are supposed to be on things like sewing, etc., which she obviously is an expert in. But it turns out, actually, that she's a much more detective than the men who are sent out searching for Jim. An observation that Jim makes, uh, and certainly uh, an observation that Huck experiences firsthand. So through the irony of Judith Loftus, the, the, diff, the gap between the social expectations of her and the realities of her, her smartness, her savvy, Twain gets at traditional subordination and ideals of female equality. And he plays with the, that tension. And I would say both those values are in that uh, chapter, but they're played with and riffed on in interesting ways. Twain, although very invested in female domesticity, is moving towards, sees the power of these smart, savvy women and, and the validity of their claims to uh, social equality. Another really good example of irony in the text is the devoutly Christian Miss Watson owns a slave. And the irony between slavery and Christianity is at the core right? Uh, the discrepancy between slavery and Christianity and the values of both systems is at the core of antebellum slavery. Uh, and much of the abolitionist movement in the North is going to be driven by Christian outrage. And much of the Christian religious system in the South is going to be perverted in an attempt to justify a clearly immoral slave system. And, and so uh, Miss Watson gives Twain a way of critiquing racial hierarchy, pointing out the irony of racial hierarchy uh, and arguing for racial equality, but also taking a shot at the discrepancy between Christian idealism and material desire, right? We One of our tensions is the tension in American culture between our, our religious ideals and uh, our, our desire for stuff, for money, economic need, and material desire. And Miss Watson, the irony of a Christian owning a slave and being willing to sell it down the river allows Twain to explore that tension as well. Uh, <clears throat> another tension we, we see through the character of Pat, 
Uh, and again later through uh, some of the other characters that you've encountered, like the king uh, and the duke and uh, Colonel Sherburne and Boggs and, and other in incidents that we're going to meet and other uh, poor whites we're going to encounter, although Sherburne isn't a poor white, but Boggs is, uh, is this uh, idea that poor whites are passionate defenders of an economic system that actually has marginalized them, right? Many of these whites are poor because they don't have an economic role because most of the economic roles in Southern culture are filled by slave labor. So the slave system is destroying the economic opportunity of poor whites, and yet throughout the text we encounter them as the most vigilant uh, defenders of racism and the slave ideology. So And so, again, Twain is able to critique the tensions of uh, racial hierarchy and racial equality through that irony of poor whites, but he's also able to get at class, social mobility, and social hierarchy, and he's also able to get at masculinity, aggressive masculinity, communal masculinity. So one ironic construct gives him three social criticisms that he can explore, three social tensions that he can unpack. Okay, let's wrap up this discussion uh, at, with a look at one specific scene from the text. I'm looking at page 147. It's from the section I believe that you just completed. Um, <clears throat> and, it, and it's a, a wonderful little paragraph that Huck uh, writes or dictates to our, our, our author, I guess. We, we're not, that's never really explained, right, how Huck writes the novel. Anyway, this is a wonderful little paragraph about uh, the, the outrageous hypocrisy of these two feuding families going to church, going to the same church and reflecting on brotherly love and grace and, and all and faith and all and good works while they've got their guns with them, while they have been engaged in years with um, a totally irrational desire to destroy each other. And they've been killing each other for years. And there they are with their guns at church. And it's just a classic example of irony, right? The discrepancy between the expectation, church is the place where people go to pray and come together as a community, and the reality that these two families are literally killing each other off, right? Um, there's some wonderful language play in here that you can work with. Um, obviously, the guns is is the important detail. Oh, sorry about that. Let me get back. Obviously, the guns are an important detail. Um, and But I love this phrase, ornery preaching, because the, the, the humor there is, for Huck, this is all sort of really hardcore preachiness that drives him crazy, right? He's, he, as we know from earlier, he's frustrated by sort of Christian Bible church teaching. And so his, his frustration is with the teaching and the preaching is ornery. But of course, the real orneriness are these two families pitted against each other in the room. And so Huck is all frustrated about brotherly love and he calls it tiresome. And then later, the pre four destination is it. Obviously, predestination is the word. So Huck doesn't understand it. He plays with it. He plays with it. He doesn't get it. And he calls it one of the roughest Sundays he's had yet. And he's referring to sort of the religious ideology of the sermon, right? And how sort of rigid in its Baptist Christian ideology of the late 19th century it is. And it's Baptist Christian theology of the late 19th century it is. Uh, but really, the rough, the roughness of this situation is men men with guns in a church, right? And, and Huck doesn't comment on that at all. And again, there's that irony between what Huck knows and what, he, what we know, and what Huck sees and what we see. Um, so really fun passage that allows Twain to get at the tension between religious faith and intellectual reason, the tension between spirituality and materialism, uh, forms of masculinity, aggressive and communal, are also in play here that he can comment on, and, and uh, all sorts of other dynamics. So the idea here is that irony is about discrepancy, and discrepancy is a tool that an author can use to explore social hypocrisies, social tensions, exactly like the ones we want to explore in this class. Hope this was a helpful introduction to irony. See you in Blackboard.